All right, so ladies and gentlemen, in this episode, we want to look at, um, obviously, poultry, but the duck side, exactly. We want to look at raising or keeping ducks for commercial purposes. But, well, as much as you are keeping them for commercial purposes, you can as well keep them um, for home consumption as well. Now, very few people have actually taken keen interest in keeping ducks. Mr. Mwana Makondo is one particular person, one particular farmer who's decided to take keen interest in raising these for commercial purposes and he's been doing this for the last 20 years. A lot of people believe that, you know, for you to keep ducks, you need a lot of water, you need, you know, to have a wet, you know, ground, you need a lot of, you know, um, a muddy area because as per 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 perception, many people believe that, you know, ducks really love a lot of water now what are some of the breeds of ducks that exist obviously you may know about something like you know ordinary ducks you may know pekings but apart from that what else is there mr mwana makondo thank you so much for allowing us to come through today you are most welcome thank you very very much and uh good to see you wow you've done an amazing job here 20 years how has been your experience wonderful it uh, all started as a matter of trial and uh, error along the way. We picked it up and realized that this was something that we could go, go into on a very serious note. And right from the onset, uh, I would like to recognize the contribution of the family. Mm -hmm. Because all these efforts, whatever I would like to do, if your family is not uh, keen, to participate and encourage each other, you are bound to fail because you can hardly ever do it alone. We've been at the ducks for quite a while, like you have rightly mentioned. Initially, we started with a single pecking. You can imagine just one female pecking. So, what did you draw the interest of, you know, venturing in? Um duck keeping at a commercial level, really? Um, difficult question to answer because I really can't pinpoint a particular thing that would have led to that decision. But perhaps it could also be coupled with the test of the duck meat. Okay. So at least we have tested <laughs> you. You've eaten? One day we decided to slaughter one of our ducks. Okay. And believe you me, you can't beat the pecking duck meat. Well, I've been told, I've, I've never tested it before, but I've been told before that it has got a very, very good meat. Now, for you to, you know, move from one pecking to now a thousand that I'm able to see here, different breeds per se. How did you reach at this level? Like you would have observed, water is paramount. So we are blessed that in this habitat, on the parameters of our plot, we have got a seasonal stream. Okay. So once in a while, they love to, to go to the stream. But even when there is no stream, we took efforts to make some ponds for them. It was one thing that you have to learn about the duck, the duck will not eat dry ration. Okay. Everything that it eats, it must always mix with some water. So water, yes, but you do not need to provide the kind of water which makes them dirty. Because if they are dirty, then they will be prone to worms. So I think from the few humble numbers we started with in the beginning, over the passage of time, we, begin, we began to master the art of how to rear the ducks, particularly the challenging aspect of incubation because a lot of people have had challenges getting the duck to multiply because the duck eggs 
cannot be incubated or should not be incubated at the same temperature like chicken eggs. Your hatch rate will be exceedingly low. So the moment we, 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 we were able to bypass that, then we realized that actually it is possible that we, with the right feet, you can multiply the numbers very, very quickly because in a period of three to four months, you cannot differentiate the duckling from the parents. They will have grown to maturity in four months, which is hardly, you can hardly find a chicken that can mature in that year kind of period unless you go for broilers. I've seen that you know you've managed to bring in a couple of you know different types at uh, the farm here. Maybe you can just take us through some of the types of uh, ducks that you know that uh, the Zambian environment is favorable for someone to keep. Okay. Of course, we we'll always start with the, our local ducks, which is the Muscovy. 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 Okay. These are the ones that are easily identifiable by the reddish uh, growth on their heads. Okay. How do you differentiate between a male and a female duck? For the Muscovy, the female duck will not have as much mass on its head as the, as the male. And an adult male will grow to almost the, double the size of the female. Mm -hmm. And even the feet, the feet of the male, even at a tender age as a duckling, they will always appear much larger than, than the ones for the female. Okay, okay, interesting. So now when we talk about um, the local ones, um, at what stage do they begin to mate and perhaps start laying eggs? You can safely say five, six months. Because the initial eggs will be rather small and they are only suitable for the table. So you will eat the first few eggs that they produce. Thereafter, then you can start hatching. Okay. There is a slight difference with the exotic breeds. The exotic breeds mature much, much earlier by, by about one and a half months to two months early. They have already matured? They have already matured. Okay. So how do you tell that my ducks have matured and they're ready to start laying eggs? The obvious signal is just the mating. Of course they will have looked a little bit large but you will see the age to mate and for the male they begin to get protective. So they begin to go to, to, to to be dominant in the in the parks, then you can see that these ones I think are now coming on range. All right, so that is the first type of uh, the ducks that Zambia at the moment can accommodate, and these are um, you know the usual local uh, you know ordinary ducks that we have known from our childhood. So how do you tell that this is the you know the usual local duck obviously you can look at you know the head they usually have reddish spots around females are a little a slightly smaller as compared to um, to the male now moving on from um, our local breeds we come to exotic breeds of ducks that you have also decided to harvest here what do you have we have the pekings the pecking is pure white. Pure white. I know that uh, a number of times this term is uh, used loosely, but uh, truly speaking, the pecking will be pure white, like this one which is here. Mm -hmm. Then we have the ruins. The ruins are usually mistaken for 
mallards mm -hmm. because their appearance appears very close but you will see the that the ruins are not as streamlined as the as the mallards the mallards tend to have more slimmer slimmer bodies and tails but the, the ruins are much get to grow much larger than those ones so that is a ruin and the females will come out in brown with a gold patch at the uh, ends of the of the wing feathers the ruins okay. then we have the khaki camp bells which will be all brown then we have the dark ones i'll show you a couple of the dark ones uh, then we have another type that unfortunately i don't know the name up to now <laughs> and amongst that grouping of, of, of ducks that is an exception because that one is solitary it does not move in in packs and apparently that one freely incubates its eggs always always yes because the pekings and the ruins and the camp bells do not incubate their eggs so when they lay you have to make sure that you get rid of the eggs is that so to make matters worse they rarely nest mm. in other wow. words you do not expect them to go and lay these eggs in any prescribed place okay like uh, your chicken or your ordinary duck who keep on uh, dropping the eggs in a particular place and then incubate mm -hmm. but the, the these pekings and the ruins even as you can see them wandering around and lying around if it's time to drop the egg they will drop the egg right there where where they are and move on so it's up to you at the end of the day to take a walk around and uh, gather the eggs well a very difficult bird to <laughs> to deal with because at the end of the day you have to make sure that you keep track of their movements especially when they have reached at that age of laying eggs if you are to pick up a few eggs here and there now uh, mr uh, Magondo, let us look at now uh, the egg ratio of these different types of you know ducks that you have uh, explained and given us so far when it comes to egg laying which ones are quite effective which lay eggs quite well the exotic ones will give you more eggs because like we have said they do not take time to incubate so it means for their entire lifespan so long as they are feeding they will be dropping eggs almost continuously mainly dependent on the on the nutrition that you that you give them so on the average you can safely say that you can expect even a 200 eggs per, per bed annually yeah. and uh, no local or, in, or indigenous chicken can give you that kind of uh, number of eggs okay. because of the time that they take to go and uh, incubate the eggs and brood the, brood the young okay all right so ladies and gentlemen now we're going to take you around uh, the farm so that at least uh, mr mwana makondo can show us some of these different types and breeds of you know ducks that he was talking about remember he talked about um uh the pekings he talked about he talked about the lawns and of course others as well luckily for us there are some that are here as well and um if you are if you are a keen you know follower of uh, you know um um, channels like you know natural world and they are showing you know uh, water habitats and they are showing ducks that really reside just around the water I think you know there are some ducks that are quite funny that look pretty much close to penguins um, he has them here 
We are going to take you to, through. You are going to see what he has. Otherwise, you're still watching Olimi and we're going to take you around and see what Mr. Mwana Makondo has at the moment.